the dreaded rural purge. I was just a kid when it happened. I didn't even know about it until years later. It was really quite an audacious move if you think about it. You've got to hand it to CBS for having the sheer wherewithal to follow through with their decision. Some say that the network was just playing catch up and had to do it. Truthfully, I'm not sure. So anyway, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, according to Wikipedia, The Rural Purge was a series of cancellations of still very popular rural-themed TV shows, the majority of which occurred at the end of the 1970-71 television season. In addition to shows such as Mayberry RFD, The Beverly Hillbillies and Green Acres, the cancellations also ended several highly rated variety shows that had been on CBS since the beginning of television broadcasting. I have gone on record in numerous other videos talking about how much I've loved the Andy Griffith show over the years, especially when I was growing up. What I haven't stated all that often is that I became acquainted with this show and grew to love it not during its initial run but rather through syndicated repeats. Yep, the actors who played Andy, Opie, Aunt B, and Barney had all moved on to other adventures, while their characters, the ones they helped create and immortalize, remained behind forever in Mayberry. And Mayberry RFD, one of the Purge's first victims, was an extension of The Andy Griffith Show. Griffith himself appeared on it, and other Mayberry favorites such as Goober Pyle and Howard Sprague were major characters on this spin-off from The Andy Griffith Show. Sure, it wasn't as good, but it was still solid programming, entertaining, and a proven ratings winner for CBS. And the same holds true for other shows that were victims of the rural purge. In particular, I really, really liked the Beverly Hillbillies, especially during the summertime when school was out. I would do my very best to watch it every single morning. Other shows impacted by The Purge, I watched less frequently, but I did watch. Shows like Green Acres and Petticoat Junction were a ton of fun, and aside from their rural themes, these shows, simply put, well, they were a way to escape from all of the craziness going on in the world back then. Even now, these shows provide that same function. They transport the viewer back to a simpler time, a time when Cokes were a nickel and comics were a dime. One other kind of cool thing about these shows is that the Beverly Hillbillies, Green Acres, and Petticoat Junction were, well, they were one of the first examples of an extended television universe. We see it all the time in TV and motion pictures today, but back then the idea that all of these characters on different shows knew each other and could on occasion interact with each other was pretty cool. Wow, I haven't even talked about Hee Haw. Sorry, Roy. Sorry, Buck. Sorry, Hee Haw, honeys. Maybe this one doesn't feel as painful of a loss because it was a show that refused to die. After getting cancelled by CBS instead of packing things up, the show just moved to syndication where it flourished for years. Alright, so you get it, right? Rural themed shows, still very highly rated, given their walking papers by CBS. Since that time, television historians have looked back and analyzed that decision. Why did CBS do it? Was it the right thing to do? Was it bold? Or was it a cowardly act? A few years back in the Socionomist magazine, writer Robert Folsom explained that the rural perch was an inevitability. In other words, it had to happen. The deeply negative social mood within the U.S. could not be contained or ignored. And CBS's lighthearted rural programming, as popular as it was, just seemed out of place. As such, actor Pat Bertram, the guy who played Mr. Haney on Green Anchors, said it best when he described 1971 as the year that CBS killed everything with a tree in it. And part of me thinks that maybe CBS was onto something. Those were hectic, volatile times, and for good or bad, a lot of the network's programming existed in a world that was oblivious, blissfully unaware of what was happening in the real world. It was part of those show's charms. But looking back, I guess it was also a curse. And let's not forget that the US had recently won the space race and finally put a man on the moon. For a time at least, it seemed like technology would be our savior, providing a path to a better life. At least that was what we all hoped for back then. Now I think we can look back and realize that there are both pros and cons to all of the amazing technological advances of the past few decades, but back then, 
It all seemed like peaches and cream. Nothing bad could come from these technological advances. So why in the world would we watch shows about simple folks, simpler times in Mayberry, or hillbillies in Beverly Hills? I'm sure these are the things that CBS network executive Fred Silverman said to his colleagues oh so many years ago. So, what did we get from CBS after the purge? Well, it wasn't all bad. I didn't love Maude, but I did kind of enjoy All in the Family and its spin-off The Jeffersons. And I really grew to love MASH. Sure, that final episode wasn't the greatest, but for 11 seasons, MASH really was a great TV show that probably wouldn't have happened if not for the rural purge. That said, you can't beat those darn hillbillies, Irene Ryan, Donna Douglas, and Max Baer. Even though he isn't pictured here, good old Buddy Ebsen, they were just the best. And part of me shakes my head wondering why the two types of programming simply couldn't coexist. Why couldn't we have had a couple more seasons of hillbilly shenanigans and maybe even a little more Mayberry RFD along with All in the Family and eventually MASH? I just don't get it. I really don't. All right, one last picture. As long as we've been talking about the Beverly Hillbillies and Ellie Mae herself, Ms. Donna Douglas, let's remember her co-starring effort with Elvis in the 1966 film, Frankie and Johnny. Man, I really love those old Elvis movies, and this one, well, it's no exception. Now it's your turn. Tell me what you think about The Rural Purge. Was it courage? or a cowardly move on the part of CBS. Please share your memories in the comments section and while you're at it, I would love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.